In Lesson 12, we will discuss the sources of electrical energy. As always, I caution you that it is not all-inclusive of everything we do need to know on the topic. Additional information can be found in the General Aviation Maintenance Technician's Handbook, FAA-H-8083-30. One way of generating a voltage and electrical current is by a chemical reaction. In a charged battery, there are positive ions on one side of a separator and negative ions on the other. Once a conductive path is established between the two sides, electrons will flow from the negative side to the positive side. This flow of electrons is an electrical current. Many batteries can be recharged by using a higher voltage to force electrons back to the negative side, re-establishing a potential difference between the two sides. Thermal couples produce electricity when wires of dissimilar metals are connected at different temperatures. Thermal couples are one example of this occurring in aviation. In the cylinder head temperature gauge, one probe is placed in the exhaust system and the other is placed in the cylinder head temperature gauge in the cockpit. As the engine exhaust heats up, an electrical current is generated, which is measured and displayed on the cylinder head temperature gauge as a temperature. The hotter the exhaust probe gets in relation to the cylinder head temperature gauge, the more electrical current generated and the higher the temperature reading the scale. Piezoelectricity is the appearance of an electrical potential or voltage across the sides of a crystal when you subject it to mechanical stress by or by squeezing it. In practice, the crystal becomes a kind of tiny battery with a positive charge on one face and a negative charge on the opposite face. Current flows if we connect the two faces together to make a circuit. Solar energy is the most common light source for generating electricity, but most light will also produce electricity when shined upon a photo, photo emissive material. Most of today's calculators are examples of how room light can produce enough electricity to power your calculator. Magnets are our fifth source of electrical generation. Since it is such an important part of electrical production, we will spend a little more time discussing them. Magnets attract ferrous metals, what we commonly think of as iron, and includes most forms of steel. They each have a north and south pole, much like the planet Earth, which acts like a large magnet with lines of magnetic flux moving from the north to the south pole. Remember that like electrical charges repel each other and opposite electrical charges are attracted to each other from physics. The poles of magnets act similarly. And if we connect separate magnets, north pole to south pole, we create one larger magnet. The poles of a magnet follow the same inverse square rule as do electrical charges. Magnets produce lines of magnetic flux that leave the North Pole and re-enter at the South Pole. Retentivity is the ability of a ferrous material to retain its magnetizing force after a magnetizing influence has been removed. This property is used in electromagnets at salvage yards. An electrical current is applied to a piece of ferrous material with a low retentivity or little ability to maintain a magnetizing force after the current has been removed. This current magnetizes the piece and allows it to pick up and move iron and steel scrap. The electrical current is then cut off, demagnetizing the device, allowing the iron and steel scrap to stop or to drop. 
Permeability is a measure of how easily lines of flux travel through a material. Air is the reference and is assigned a permeability value of 1. Iron has a permeability of approximately 7,000, which means that lines of flux travel through iron 7,000 times more readily than they do through air. Lines of flux seek the path of least resistance and therefore will travel through iron before it travels through the atmosphere. In the diagram of a horseshoe magnet on the left here, we see lines of flux leaving the north pole of the magnet, traveling through the air and entering back into the south pole. In the magnet on the right, a piece of iron is placed in proximity to the poles of the magnet. This drawing illustrates how the lines of flux more readily travel through the iron than they do through the air. In a process that is called electromagnetic induction, as the conductor is passed through the lines of flux that pass between the poles of a magnet, a flow of electrons is induced in the conductor. This is the most common form of electric production. The alternators and generators in our automobiles and aircraft generate electricity based upon this principle. The bulk of the electricity used in our homes, hospitals, schools, offices, etc. is generated by electromagnetic induction. Huge steam-powered generating plants powered by coal, natural gas, or nuclear fuel, as well as hydroelectric generating plants, supply most of the world's electrical needs through the process of electromagnetic induction. The amount of electricity induced by electromagnetic induction depends upon three things. One, the rate at which the lines of magnetic flux are cut. Two, by the number of lines of flux and three, by the strength of the magnet. As electrons travel through a conductor, they create lines of magnetic flux that encircle the conductor. The strength of the magnetic field increases as the current increases. This picture illustrates current flowing through a conducting wire depicted by the red arrows. Though in class we will usually indicate current flowing from negative to positive, this picture uses the conventional flow theory, but it makes no difference for the purposes here. We can see here the lines of magnetic flux encircling the conducting wire. If a conductor is wound into a coil, the lines of flux encircling the conductor are concentrated and its magnetomotive force is increased. The strength of this electromagnet is determined by 1 the number of turns in the coil, two, the amount of current flowing through it, and three, the type of core material. In the left hand rule for coils, when a coil is grasped in the left hand with the fingers encircling it in the same direction as electron flow, from negative to positive, your thumb points to the north pole of the electromagnet. Relays are one area in aviation where an electromagnet is utilized. In a relay such as the one depicted here, the contacts are spring-loaded to the open position. Once a current is applied to the coil, the core is magnetized, pulling the contacts closed. Stop the current flow and the contacts spring back open. 